like to call it the breakup episode. Cue the Barry Mallow. Well, you came and you gave, well, I'll take it, but I sent you away. Lyris found her way to a cabin in the woods. She was living in the forest for who knows how long. Who are you? I'm no one. Are you a bear? Uh, Lyris was wandering lost in the woods. She happened upon a very humble couple who covered her with cloaks. A nice couple who lived in a hovel. They fed her and covered her with lots of blankets. Oh no, that's all right. What? And then Fax showed up. Lyris and Fax have run into each other at some random cabin in the woods, which I think is the first time that Lyris is able to confirm that Fax is still alive. <laughs> Not super exciting. The next morning, she found Fax right there in the forest and gave him her crown again, hoping that he will go sit the throne. And they had their little reunion where she said, you are the king. But when he gets there, he's gonna discover that someone's already sitting there. For this is my destiny. Dinah, a new uh, character that's been introduced, is totally nuts. <laughs> <laughs> Dinah Falstone sits on the throne for a good couple of scenes. It's the Lost Queen. And Lady Falstone was just totally evil, the most evil of all. <laughs> She's sitting on the throne and she is waiting for, I think, her dragons? I am 100% sure that she called for her dragons. Or her winged monkeys. That might be a different show. One has never seen a monkey fly. Now, Dinah spent a lot of time enjoying the throne, a throne which no one else seems to care to take at the moment. So she sits there alone. She has overtaken the Overlook at Hope's Reach and is killing servants and eating hearts, bloody hearts. She's uh, crazy. Guarded by servants that are forced to eat one another while she waits for her dragons. Danith brought Corrin back to life, even though Kieran Nalik was very unhappy about it. I have seen what happens when the dead come to living again. Which was very ill-advised. None of the broken men wanted him to go through with it. And in order to do it, he asked the Red Priest to sacrifice himself. So the Red Priest dies over Corrin's body, and Corrin is back to life. <laughs> <laughs> and when I rose from the dead, I was pretty lovely. <laughs> Ow! Corn Valdovis, formerly dead, now back from the dead. Except for the fact that Dan is Cole and I just don't seem really compatible. But the price for that was losing the broken men in their entirety. They no longer follow him. Um, so he's all alone, just him and Corn. Was it worth it, you ask him? What are you doing? What are you thinking? He doesn't seem to care. Doesn't seem to have that lust for the throne that Corn was hoping he would have. And that just seems kind of disappointing. As a result of that, all the broken men have turned their back on Danith Cole and are now looking to yours truly to be their leader. Rose Montgomery wakes up in the North Tower with the cursed finger on. <laughs> <laughs> Dear beloved Rose, played by Maddie Goff, she was being tortured and led by dark spirits. The aftermath of uh, Rin, uh, it was his little, uh, you know, glove thing that was on his finger. Rose turned into a really evil jerk when she had the claw thing on. It seems to make you evil. She pushed him down the stairs three times. <laughs> and, uh, I either had to kill her, chop off her hand, or take it. And what did I do? Callan Malik is a hero, man. He took it. I will carry this darkness, my lady! <laughs> Callan comes up and takes the finger from her and takes on the curse himself. I love you. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> and tells her to run away, and she reluctantly does so. And now he is possessed by Rin. It's very eerie. So Rose is totally fine per usual Rose. 
my brother has been taken over by Rin's dark evil spirit, which I can totally sense as his sister. Can't quite put my finger on it, what's going on with him, but I know that there's some sort of uh, torment going on and, and, uh, and it's, it, it's tormenting me in addition to this. And now, it threatens his very soul. Me.